Thank you for the invitation to the organizer, and uh, thank you for this talk. And happily for me, uh, there is no large randomized phase three trial inhibiting stem cells in gastric cancer, as far as I know, with all uh, I tried to look for. Uh, and we are going to remind everyone what is a cancer stem cell and a stem cell. So a stem cell is a cell that has a double capacity to differentiate and to go to mature tissue, and, but also to self-renew, which is very important. When a normal stem cell uh, acquires some mutation, uh, she can transform in cancer stem cell and then lead to progenitor uh, cancer cells and to uh, uh, diverse types of cancer cells, very heterogeneous. To have this mutation, many uh, pathways have been involved, and especially the JAK-STAT pathway, but also the wind beta catenin and many others, to lead to a stem cell with unregulated uh, divisions. Cancer stem cells are very important thus for the occurrence of the disease of cancer, but also in, involved in cancer treatment resistance and in cancer dissemination, as you can see here. Cancer stem cells are very resistant to chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and some targeted agent, and they can repopulate the, the tumor tissue when you have killed with your treatment the vast majority of the non-cancer stem cells, but they are also very able to create metastatic lesion from themselves and not with a pack of 15 or 20 cells that are generally necessary to, 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 to spread uh, in the, the organism. So highly tumorogenic, fundamentally responsible for continued malignant growth, resistant to chemotherapy and current targeted therapies for some of them, and initiator of metastasis. Very dangerous for us. It's also important to know that there are different populations, the real cancer stem cells, some cancer cells with stem nests, and some, let's say, more mature or differentiated cancer cells, heterogeneous and without stem nests. So resistance to treatment is very important here uh, in targeting these cells because we think they, are a they have a major role in, in the occurrence and persistence of disease. And what is interesting is that when you're treating, it's resisting, but also you can induce some stemness profile in your tumor uh, heterogeneous cell population by different treatment, radiation therapy, targeted agents, and chemotherapy. This has been clearly shown in preclinical models. And then when the disease relapses, you have more stemness characteristic in the cancer population. To target cancer, stem cells will be thus of great importance because if you kill all the blue cells, the yellow one will produce new cells. If you kill the, the yellow cells, then you may have a better tumor regression, long-lasting uh, disease control or recovery. So, however, to target these cells is quite challenging because, first of all, they are heterogeneous. They are still cancer cells and are not expressing all the same marker at the cell surface or inside the cell. There is a lack for a specific surface marker for monoclonal antibody use, especially in these cells. And they are mutating, so it's a dynamic phenomenon. It's not that you've got one population or ten population of cancer stem cells that will not move. They will change uh, over time. STAT3 is dysregulated in many cancers, including gastric cancer, is involved in stemness property, and may be a good candidate to target uh, these uh, stem cells. Many state free uh, uh, inhibitors have been developed. Lots of them were not successful. A lot of unstable molecule, poor membrane permeability, toxic profile, poor pharmacokinetic. Three of them have been uh, developed more recently. The first one was able to induce disease control in solid tumor, and here it's important to differentiate what is solid tumor and hematologic tumors. It's not the same. There are a lot of development of cancer stem, stem cells sorry, targeting in hematology, but much more or less in uh, solid tumors. This first compound uh, was uh, described uh, to control disease, but no shrinkage and was neurotoxic over time. So patient has all to, uh, to stop the treatment and neurotoxicity was quite impairing uh, for the patient's daily life. The second one was more efficient, but neurotoxicity was still there, less important, but more GI effects and was also stopping his development. And there is one compound from AstraZeneca efficient in hematology, but not in solid tumors. There is a new agent for, uh, called BBI-608 that targets uh, uh, through state free uh, cancer stem cells. And you can see here uh, sphere cultured cells, tumor cells, uh, and stem cells. And you can see what happened in a colorectal cell line and another tumor cell line uh, after one day of exposition to the exposure sorry, to, to the drug. This is a first-in-class drug, small molecule, orally administered with uh, 80 milligram capsules. 
And you can see here that comparing the effects on uh, spherogenesis of this compound with imatinib, sunitinib, or alotinib, you have a very different result, and it seems that this compound is much more uh, active in uh, cancer stem cells. More important, uh, these compound spares normal stem cells, which are very important for the hemostasis of our organism. And you can see here on myeloid and erythroid uh, uh, lines that there is no impairment of these lines uh, uh, through uh, treatment. Finally, this compound has also been shown as acting on state three, which is also a major actor in uh, immune reaction to cancer cells that it was able to just uh, refrain or to stop immune evasion mechanism uh, through immune checkpoint modulation, but also immune suppressive micro environment that the tumor is able to create to escape the immune system. So cancer stemness action, immune action also. Here you can see uh, the proof of the inhibition of state three, which is not very important. And also, uh, this compound is able to uh, uh, inhibit the beta catenin pathway, the wind beta catenin pathway, which may be important in many cancers, including gastric. So this compound has been tested first uh, in a phase two trial uh, with patients pre-treated. Uh, some received second line taxane, uh, some didn't receive already second line taxane. Uh, the uh, compound was uh, combined with Paclitaxel, and they just benchmarked their results with what was observed in the rainbow trial presented before. What you can see here is that in the rainbow trial, response rate with the taxane only arm were 16 percent, in the Pax taxane plus uh, remicirumab 28, and in the uh, same population with uh, taxane naive treated by BBI and Paclitaxel, they observed a 50 percent response rate. However, the numbers are very low, and these uh, results have to be taken cautiously, of course. When looking at all the second line patients they've got, the response rate was 33%, and when looking at patients in all lines of treatment, it was 26%. Interestingly, some complete response were all re also observed with the combo of Paclitaxel and BBI um, in the second line and more gastric cancer. So this has led to the design of a large uh, randomized control phase three trial testing taxanes in second line gastric cancer or gastroesophageal junction cancer, plus or minus BBI. This study has planned to enroll 700 patients, and there is an interim analysis that will be performed very soon. I will stop here because there are not other, to my knowledge, uh, clinical trials ongoing with this mode of action that may be very promising for the future. Thank you for your attention.